What's up, fellas? Welcome to M to M coverage. The big news of the weekend in the NFL was the Jamal Adams trade from New York Jets to the Seattle Seahawks. We have a Seattle Seahawks fan with us today, Suraj, Kevin, and Joffrey, as always. But first, let's say hi to Trevor. Hey, Trevor, how you doing? Doing well. How are you guys doing? We're all good. We're all good. We're excited to see some news in the NFL after a while. And I guess kind of this, this news came out of nowhere. It was a little bit of a surprise. But I guess the um, based on what Jamal, Jamal Adams said about Adam Gase, it's not like – it's not completely unexpected. So as a Seahawks fan, what was your just initial reaction to you guys getting Jamal Adams for those, for those three picks and Bradley McDougal? Yeah, sure. Well, initially it was just hype pure hype like my, my friend texted me I was like no way I thought he was talking about he said just said Jamal so I thought, thought he was talking about Jamal Murray now I was confused and then, <laughs> and then I checked the details um once you look at the details a little bit more you, you the hype toned down a little bit just because it does seem like I think on paper a bit of an overpay um but but once you put it in perspective I think I think the key here is the Seahawks drafting um and we First off, all of our first round picks are always in the back end of the first round, um, usually 25 or, or higher. Um, and just drafting wise, we've, we've really underwhelmed, I think. I think they've, they've tried to recreate the magic they recreated back in 2012, 2013, 2014 um, as best they can. But if you look at the past first round picks, second round picks we've had, really no one's panned out much. Um, and I think when you put it in that perspective, I don't really mind giving up the first, yeah. Um, I would have liked to maybe just give up a, just one first and a third, but I think that's – based on how it sounded with the Jets, um, they sounded like they really wanted to keep him, and, and really that extra first is what put it over the edge. So at the end of the day, I think it's a win-win. Jets get a huge haul, um, and we weren't really in win-now mode, and I think Russ, Russ wants superstars, and we gave him one. So that's just that was just initial reaction. Yeah, I, I know you – I think you're pretty spot on with that point. I mean – for me, it was like, Russell Wilson, you got a superstar to carry you on the offensive side of the ball, and now you need one on the defensive side. And you got that in Jamal Adams because I, he's pretty much been carrying this Jets defense. Joffrey's a Jets supporter, so I think he can attest to that. But let me just ask this question to Kevin and Joffrey first. So let's go with Joffrey first. Who won this trade? Who do you think won this trade? I honestly think it was a win-win. First of all, obviously the Seahawks are in win-now mode. They don't care about the future. They treated they treated two first round picks for him. And like Trevor said, the Seahawks first round picks have almost always been bust. I mean, if you look at it, the last time the Seahawks had a good first round pick, it was Earl Thomas and Russell Coombe ten years ago. Yep. Right? And then that was like a top fifteen pick too. Yeah. And the Seahawks are in win now mode. They're one yard away from winning the division last year. And I, I really think that this puts them over the 49ers now. And as for the Jets, you know, I I hate to say it, but I'm not sure. I don't think they're gonna make the playoffs anymore. They lost one of the. So you're changing your you're changing your AFC East pick. Really, well, 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 well. No, they're set for the future, though. You know, if they have a bad year again. Adam Gase is definitely gone. They can still get out of the enemy. They have two first round picks, and Marcus May. He showed some real potential last year, and you know he might be a breakout star this year. You know, I still think Sam Darnold's going to have a better year than Daniel Jones. I still think the Jets are going to be better than the Giants. But I don't think they're making the playoffs anymore. I hate to say it. Okay, well, so we got him going off, going off of his pick, um, not supporting his word anymore. But, yeah, Kevin, go on. Yeah, before I go into uh, my analysis, of this trade, I like to welcome Jeffrey A back to the world of reality um, <laughs> because there's no way in hell that the New York Jets were going to go anywhere sniffing even to the playoff race. Um, but going to this trade, I do think it's a win win, but I do think the Seahawks win more than the Jets do. Here's why let's talk about the coronavirus pandemic. We don't know if college football is going to even happen. College football. Might not happen, which means that, what, they're going to be drafting based off of their performance maybe two years ago, three years ago, um, based off of potential. Remember, this is a 2021 and a 2022 first-round pick, not a future, not all, not all the way down the line. The next two years' worth of first-round picks. And now scouts, they have to be working overtime to see um, 
to see who's going to be good. Seahawks can't even draft well uh, when when they have a full college football season's worth of tape. So Seahawks knew that that's not their strong suit. So they did a good job of getting a proven comedy in in Jamal Adams, who who fills in that Cam Chancellor type of role. He is going to be a beast. The Seahawks secondary looks really good. Um, and the Jets, they, 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 do get, they do get two first-round picks, but, I mean, they just lost their best player on the roster, their best player on the roster. Joffrey A is crying in his room because he, he's been t- telling me all offseason that Jamal Adams is not going to get traded. He's not going to get traded. He got traded. So Seahawks, they're already – what a top contender now with Jamal Adams. Uh, they have a leader on the defense, and finally, they don't have to rely on Russell Wilson to do everything. Yeah, I think I think it was inevitable based on what Jamal Adams, the chemistry that was lacking with the rest of his team and the management. And Le'Veon Bell had some harsh words for him afterwards. But yeah, it definitely shakes up things in the in the Jets franchise. But it also definitely shakes up things in the entire NFC. Like, I'm scared as a Saints fan of Seattle more now. Um, But let's just talk about the NFC West, and let's get back to Trevor on this. Who is winning the NFC West and why? I mean, I'm a Hawks fan. You know what my answer is going to (laughs) be. I do think, though, I I will give you this. I think before this trade, I I think we we take a wild card spot. Um, But I think it's going to come down to another one of these – week 17 type games. I, I haven't, I don't have our schedule off the top of our head, but one of these games where if we take one, one or two over the, over the Niners, I think that pushes up us over the edge. And I think Adams immediately comes in as a huge impact player covering Kittle, right? If, if Adams can't cover Kittle, who can cover Kittle? Like the, the dude's already a matchup nightmare. Adams, I think is one of the few pe- people that's really one of those positionless defenders. Um, and I think he, he can at least match up well with Kittle, um, maybe not totally shut him down. But, but if, Kittle, if they're running their offense even more through Kittle, who knows what, what's going to happen with Mostert, all of that. Um, I think this really gives us an edge on the defense. Um, though I did see Quentin Dunbar just got placed on the exempt list. So <laughs> who knows if Trey Flowers will step up. But, but yeah, I, I think this, this is the, the year where we, we take one more, get that extra yard, um, and I think we win the division. So. Yeah, and the one thing you see from Seattle is continuity. That always indicates a good season, at least. At the, at the worst, it's going to be wild card. Afterwards. And that was your prediction before. Yeah, exactly. Or 10 or 4. Yeah, so speaking of uh, George Kittle, I know Joffrey has a lot of beef with some 49ers fans on Twitter. But what I was hearing from 49ers fans was nobody can guard George Kittle. Nobody at all. Um, Geoffrey, what do you have to say to that? And also the uh, NFC West. You know, George Kittle is a good tight end. But at the end of the day, this addition by the Seahawks it is going to make them a really competitive team. Like, like I said before, one yard away, if they had that extra yard, they would have won that division, right? And then obviously George Kittle, one of the best tight ends uh, in the league right now. Jamal, I feel like Jamal Adams can really – have an impact on this 49ers now. Uh, he might not shut down George Kittle, but, you know, he might limit him to, like, 70 yards, which is pretty good. And I trust Russell Wilson over Jimmy Garoppolo any day, any day of the week, you know. He's just – he's been an MVP caliber quarterback almost every single year. He brings back the Seahawks every, almost every single game, fourth quarter comebacks. You see, like, left and right every year. And then Jimmy Garoppolo on the other end, I think he's going to regress a little bit, you know. He lost Emmanuel Sanders. They replaced him with a rookie. Uh, he lost, lost Joe Shiela. They did replace him with the O-Lyman Trent William. The way I see it is that the 49ers, they're going to be – they haven't improved immensely. They still are about the same. But Seahawks, on the other, than, other hand, with the addition of Jamal Adams, they're one of the best teams in the NFC right now. And Kevin, let's finish up. Okay. Here. Yeah, so – let, let me go back to the Seahawks defense. Yes, Jamal Adams is great, but tell me who on that defensive line is good. They lost to Devian Clowney. Their last first-round pick, LJ Collier, bust. Um, their defensive line is ranked the worst in the league by PFF. They don't know how to get pressure on the quarterback. So if Jimmy Garoppolo has all the time in the world, he, he, even he can make throws. And it's not just George Kittle he can throw to. Debo Samuel 
he's going to become really good. Raheem Mostert, he just agreed with the 49ers on a contract, on his contract. So he's coming back. I know, I know Joffrey mentioned that that would be a big loss, but he's coming back. And then they got uh, Brandon Ayuk. They got new weapons. Trent Williams is a great offensive line piece. Dude, if the Seahawks can't put pressure on people, then that's a huge problem. So Jamal Adams can't be everywhere on the field. Now, do I trust Russell Wilson over Jimmy Garoppolo? Of course. Russell Wilson is a top two quarterback in this league right now. But the Seahawks defensive line just cannot generate any type of pressure. The 49ers still maintain that monstrous defensive line. Yeah, uh, they, they lost to Forrest Buckner, but, but they got Javon Kinlaw. And they still have most of their weapons on the offense. They lost to Emmanuel Sanders, but he's a 30-something-year-old wide receiver. Um, I still think it's really close between the 49ers and Seahawks. I agree with Trevor that it might come down to one of those last com- in divisional games. But I still think 49ers have the edge here. I'm going to round off the picks with a 2v2 split. I'm going to go 49ers as well, just for the sake, just for the fact that, like, I'm more scared of the 49ers as a team. When I'm from the perspective of a Saints fan, going up against Seattle, you know the game is going to be close. And you know Russell Wilson excels in close games. But you also know that Seattle sometimes drops those easy games that they have. Like, I, I would say the – Cardinals game against Brett Hundley with the quarterback position. They dropped that game last year, and oh, that was a game they didn't need to drop. So that, that's the thing. I don't see complete consistency with Seattle. They don't beat down the teams that they beat, and that's the only reason. I think that's like a minute thing, but that's why I'm still going with the 49ers. It's definitely up for grabs. You know, Gavin yeah. mentioned the Seahawks' defense line being bad, but, you know, they are bad last year, too. I mean, they lost to today Vian Clowney, but they also had the two defensive ends in the draft, Brian Burns, so had eight and a half sacks last year, and someone else, I'm not sure, he had seven and a half sacks. And they also had several defensive ends in the draft this year. And obviously, they were eligible player from last year's draft. He might be a bust. You never know. Yeah, you don't know that. He hasn't As of really now, played. he's a bust. As of now, he's a bust, but you never know. But He has a I very, mean, very, very low ceiling. I'll say that much. <laughs> Well, okay, Jeffrey, you just said he, oh. they drafted a bunch of new people, but did, did we not just, like, discuss how the Seahawks are bad at drafting? So, I mean – They're bad at drafting first and second round picks, but, you know, in the lower rounds, fourth, fifth rounds, they always get sleepers somewhere in the draft. We, we took Daryl Taylor with our second round – one of our second rounders, I believe. And I do actually, after, after watching a couple of his films, I, I have some hope in him, but I, I do agree we need – to really succeed, I think we're going to need to make one more, at least a veteran signing, because our line is way too young. Um, I think I don't think you see the Seahawks come out of this this summer without signing someone like a Snacks Harrison or some sort of veteran DT to lock down or make a really strong push and, and win now with Clowney. Um, if and they Everson can, Griffin. Or Everson Griffin, either of them. Yeah, um, I think if they can get those, I think that really is a is – a, now it's a no-brainer or a quite strong push, but – but I do agree that our, our line's young. There's a lot to be proven. And a lot of the guys that we do have are sort of secondary rushers that feast off of someone taking off, taking away a lot of pressure, like Clowney would eat up double teams and the other guys would come in. So, so I do agree on that point. 